if for some crazy reason interest rates continue to go up, you just hold your current interest rate today. And if interest rates go down, then you simply refinance at no cost. Hey there, everyone. Jamie with Sell for 1% joined as always. Hey, Jamie. Jason Barlow, head hey, broker Dave Barlow. Dave. And Ryan Cochran with NFM Lending. And Ryan, we, we have a special um, video set up for all you followers of ours watching our content. We're going to go over the, quote, cost of waiting to buy a house. And Ryan, you said this looks a lot like a, uh, a pre-purchase consultation. So Yeah, so I, I always go over uh, a pre-approval consultation with all my clients. And this is a big topic right now because as you guys know, when we went into the sevens on the interest rates, a lot of people got scared and they want interest rates to go down. And this just is a helpful breakdown that you can actually see the numbers instead of just saying, oh, well, interest rates are high. I'm not going to buy because I'll get screwed over on money. This is a, a presentation to break down the cost of waiting and then also reflects an option that I like to always show right now is our NFM refinance pledge and the differences between taking advantage of the NFM refinance and the cost of waiting. Oak it oak. Cool. So how I'm going to do this is going to be Jamie, you are going to be my client. Oh, boy. So I'm just going to walk through this basically like, Jamie, you're my client. I'm going to go through like a normal pre-approval consultation. So congratulations, Jamie. You are officially pre-approved for $400,000. How does that feel? Feels pretty good. I never thought I'd be here. Nice. Yeah. It, most people don't know exactly what you can get pre-approved for i know you are anticipating only getting three hundred thousand, so four hundred thousand is quite the jump up so what i wanted to do today jamie is i want to go over a couple different options for you and it's going to be at that four hundred thousand option i want to go over the cost of waiting because i know you were a little bit skittish and you wanted to wait maybe a year or two to the, for the interest rates to go down but your awesome realtor uh, dave barlow mentioned that you you should definitely look into purchasing now and take a minute of uh, gaining that equity. So that's what I would love. Realtor to totally do. tricked you. <laughs> so I'm going to share my screen real quick. And the first, yeah, can you give me some visualization, some more? Yes, vision. sure, I absolutely can. The first thing I always like to address is the elephant in the room on what potential interest rates would be. And this is what I always like to show all of my clients is. If you simply go to Google and type in mortgage interest rates, this is what comes up. Now, one of the reasons why I like this is because it can be based on a little bit more specific parameters for you, Jamie. So if we're purchasing a house at 400,000, you would be in the loan amount between 300 to 400,000. So that's why we have 300,000 for our loan amount. You're looking to put 5% down with what we went over. You're looking in the state of Ohio and your credit score is between 700 to 719. So that's where we would be at for that interest rate. That's what I'm using right now. When you officially go into contract, I will lock you in and we will have an in-contract consultation as well. But just for these numbers sakes, that's what we're going to go over. So you'll see here that with this 5% down option, you have a 4% or $400,000 purchase price. The loan amount would with putting 5% down, we're bringing it down to 380 interest rate at a seven and a half. And then the monthly payment and the cash to close. So I want to go over this option first before we start to jump into the other options that I have highlighted on going into that. So this is going to be the monthly mortgage payment. Jamie, are you familiar with what all goes into your monthly mortgage payment? I believe it is principal, interest, taxes, and insurance. Yep. And then the last one is going to be what's called PMI, which is private mortgage insurance. Because you're putting less than 20% down, you have to have private mortgage insurance. So I'm also calculating and estimating what that would be on this total monthly payment. So that is calculating everything. So if you were to purchase a house, let's say at 400,000, I'm using 1.75% 
as your property taxes. So that's going to be areas like Dublin or Westerville, the areas like that, that I know you were looking at into. So that's why I'm using that for your property taxes. Your homeowner's insurance I'm using as $100 a month, right? Which would be a $1,200 annual premium. Those can go down 20 bucks, up 20 bucks. It just depends on what you and your homeowner's insurance company ultimately uh, come to an agreement on and what your deductible and things like that is going to be. I do recommend that you go with and bundle your home and auto though, because that will always lower your annual premiums for that amount. And then the last one, obviously, like I mentioned is PMI. And that is also an estimation. We actually have access to, there's eight different private mortgage insurance companies across the country. We have access to all eight. So I get a quote from all eight and I get you the lowest price on those estimates. So that's taking into consideration all that 3,500. I know that that is kind of your max monthly goal, monthly mortgage payment goal that you did not want to exceed was 3,500. So we're right around there. You could get a $10 uh, cheaper monthly on your homeowner's insurance and be right at that 3,500. And, or you could find a house that has a little bit lower property taxes and that would put you into under 3,500 as well. Uh, your total cash to close, I'm taking into consideration your down payment, your any uh, county fees, underwriting, processing, appraisals. I'm taking into consideration everything. So when we do have your in-contract consultation, if this was your in-contract consultation, I would tell you, hey, Jamie, you're not going to exceed $24,500. If we do, I'm taking that call. So if we go over $24,500, I will be covering it. Now, of course, there are some stipulations to it. If you want to put a bigger down payment down, then that's going to be coming out of your pocket about bonds. But <laughs> that's what I want to go over to set this as our base. Now, the big reason why I wanted to have this conversation is because I know you want to wait until interest rates go down, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. But if you're looking to purchase a house and you qualify to purchase a house, you should purchase a house right now. You shouldn't wait for another year for interest rates to potentially drop or two years for interest rates to drop. Now, what I put together is this waiting for rates to come down. I put this at maybe a two year time frame when we could potentially see interest rates at a five and a half, right? This could, could happen sooner. It could happen a little bit later, but for instance, I'm just using two years as my kind of marker. So that brings me to my next article that I want to pull up, which is, do you happen to watch Shark Tank? I know Barbara. Barbara. Yeah, good old Barbara. So Barbara, who is a realtor or real estate mogul, that's where she made the majority of her income is going to be from real estate, uh, is definitely predicting that when interest rates go down, housing prices are going to go through the roof, right? So she's even anticipating, and I will send you this article, but she's even anticipating that they're likely to go up 20% in some areas. I definitely think Columbus is one of those areas. As we went over a little bit uh, yesterday on our initial call with Intel coming to Columbus, with the Honda Power Battery Plant coming, uh, Facebook or Meta now, Meta just bought more land in New Albany. Uh, Amazon just bought more land in New Albany. Google is putting two new databases in Columbus. So there's a lot of things going on that are just going to continue to driving house and prices through the roof for for us in Columbus. And not to mention that we were the third hottest market in all of the United States is going to, to, get, to continue to drive where I do believe up to 20% in the next few years on the housing market in Columbus and Cincinnati and in Cleveland. So the big three C is in Ohio. We pretty much cover the entire state. So that's why I believe that and why I'm using 480 as our purchase value that it will be in two years time frame. So that $400,000 house that you buy now today, let's say you go into contract on that house, 400,000, two years from now, it could very well be worth 480,000. Right. And then if we wait that two years, interest rates are going to go down. We know that. And we will lock you in at right that that five and a half if that's where it is in two years. But this is the thing that a lot of people don't take into consideration 
is that that amount that that 480 has gone up $80,000, even with a 5.5% interest rate, you're still going to have a higher monthly mortgage payment when you're comparing buying today and, and buying in five years or two years from now, right? So that's still a higher in, or monthly mortgage payment overall, which is what people are ultimately trying to avoid. Now, and you also have to put a bigger down payment down or cash to close because it is obviously a bigger purchase price. So this Every is still time. putting 5% down with this option. It's still running the same numbers as the property taxes being based off of the value of the house at 1.75. We're still using $100 a month for your homeowner's insurance, everything like that. It's an apples to apples comparison. The biggest thing that is changing, obviously, is that purchase price. So you're not only going to be paying a higher monthly mortgage payment, but you're also going to be paying more cash to do at closing, right? So yeah, right. And but what about all the interest that you're paying over time with that seven and a half percent interest? That's a great question, Jamie. And I'm yeah, glad that you brought that up. <laughs> so what I like to always show people as well is the amortization schedule, which Atlanta Services is just it's a broken down monthly schedule of what it would look like for a 30 year, which is what these three options are looking at. So let me pull this down here so you can see it. So this is based on that 7.5% interest rate if you bought now. This is month 12, right? So what I want to look at is the total interest that we end up paying in that first year. Let's go two years out since we're looking at two years for everything else. It would be a total of 56000 in interest because interest is front loaded on that. So, Jamie, can you tell me which one is bigger? Fifth, we'll call it 56500 or is the $80,000 in equity that you gain bigger? 80000 in equity. You're sure about that? I know it. So, $80,000 that you gain in equity that is obviously bigger is bigger and outweighs that interest that you end up paying, right? So, you're up $30,000 now. By simply buying today, you are up thirty thousand dollars in equity, even with the interest. I, I'm taking away you paying that fifty six thousand. The other kicker: I'm not a professional CPA, so don't quote me on this. But oftentimes, if you go to your CPA or tax accountant, they you can also write off some of your property taxes and the interest that you end up paying. So you're also saving money by writing off that uh, amount on the interest and in tax property taxes that you're paying. So that's going to be a little bit more that you're saving money in regards to that as well. So that's just just based off of that. That's why I would tell somebody that they should buy now instead of waiting. Specifically in Columbus, buy now if you're qualified for it. If you're looking to move and buy a house, do it. Don't wait for interest rates to come down. Because when interest rates come down, our decision goes way up. Through the roof. Correct. It should go through. So... The other reason why I'm telling everybody to purchase now is because we at NFM were offering a refinance pledge, which our refinance pledge, you will not be paying any lender fees, so like underwriting or processing fees, and we will also reimburse your appraisal, and this is good for five years. So let's say that you went into contract today, then I will send you this certificate and it will say, hey, Jamie, congratulations, you're qualified for the rate drop pledge. It this means when the rates do drop in two years, you can take advantage of doing a refinance for no out-of-pocket money and no cost at all. No lender fees and no appraisal due to you, right? So why that's significant is because if you look at our third option here and we're comparing those two same rates, right? Two years from now, interest rates are the same, five and a half, five and a half, except the biggest difference is, is now that you're paying on a loan amount of 380, right? Because this is what we would be refinancing is this $400,000 contract that we went into contract on. This is the one we would be refinancing. Your monthly mortgage payment then would be nearly $500 lower than what you would have gone into contract today at. So that's the second reason why I'm telling everybody to, if you are qualified and looking to buy a house, buy a house. Do not wait for interest interest rates to go down. You're going to gain, in Columbus specifically, you're going to gain 
more equity and it will outweigh any of that interest that you end up paying with a seven and a half intra, higher interest rate. And also you can take advantage of doing the refinance with no money out of pocket at all, not paying lender fees, not paying, having to pay an appraisal to do it at that point. And you will have a way, way, way lower monthly mortgage payment compared to if you waited two years to purchase. Does that make sense, Jamie? Yeah. So let me ask real quick, does that new number also get rid of your PMI? So this, this new number is calculating a lower PMI. So I'm not completely eliminating it, but by this point, obviously you have a significant amount of money in the property. It's not quite, let me do some math here. Well, we have it valued at 480, then that's your 20%. Oh yeah, that's twenty percent. So yeah, be, technically, yes, you're it'd be you know, no, I would you and I would drop off. Correct. Yeah, it's huge. So that would five hundred dollars additional. That would be even more additional savings for for that drop off. So if I were to eliminate that, which I would do that right now, it is now below three thousand dollars. So even more money that you're saving when you're comparing buying now and refinancing later comparing to buying later with right. that same exact interest rate. Well, right. And that $3,000 a month was really where I wanted to stay. And so that yeah. psychological level below there, I think I might buy today. Yeah, absolutely. Dave, Jay, do you have any questions? No, I think that uh, makes uh, perfect sense. Um, uh, I will say that in your calculation number two, that you only actually gave 10% appreciation per year versus yeah, so 20% I, that uh, yeah. Harbor said. Year over year. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, it makes, and, and we've talked about this, uh, and this is an illustration as to why it makes sense to go ahead and purchase today. It's a win win. If for some crazy reason interest rates continue to go up, you just hold your current interest rate today. And if interest rates go down, then you simply refinance at no cost and you get the benefit of both. What you're avoiding is appreciation values. And I think we're all in agreement that home values are going to continue to go up. Uh, even in this slower market, Jay, uh, you did the calculation, I think last week, uh, or maybe yesterday when we talked, what was, uh, the overall still in Columbus was six, 7% a year. Is that what we were saying? Uh, I can pull it up and see what it was. Yeah. And, and this was, this was on, just, yes, yeah, so that was 2023 on a slow year. That was a higher right. interest rate. Right. And that's the point is that uh, lack of inventory, unless just a whole bunch of inventory comes on the market, which I don't see happening. Uh, you know, we right. saw that in the foreclosure crisis because people didn't have equity in their homes. So they just said, I'm going to walk away from it altogether. Um, in today's world, with home values since 2012 doubling in in value, we've gone from one fifty seven to three hundred and fifty thousand today. Yeah. Um, people are not gonna walk away from the home and just give it to the bank. They're gonna they're gonna at least try to sell it. Um yep. they're gonna hang in there. So Yeah, I don't think it was things a, a foreclosure crisis will happen unless you know, the economy totally flips and you can't, you know, afford the payments. You know, that's, right. that's where they, you know, the foreclosure filing that are up or, or inflation related. Sure. Yeah. But, you know, I think the, the, there's going to be a crisis. It'll be, you know, a dollar crisis, you know, an asset bubble, something like that, you know, versus people defaulting and not wanting the equity in their home. Yeah. In, in Columbus for single family housing, and this is just May numbers, the, the average sales price was up 7%. Inventory was up 36%, in contracts were down 60%, and the number of solds were down 12%. So we're selling less, we have more on the market. Right, but prices are still in value was up. 
appreciation value is up seven percent, and that's on the and that's on probably one of the slowest months that we've had this year. I I don't know. My April was my best month I've had in a long time. This these are all closed. These are all ones oh, really? that are in April. So, anyway. so these would be right up. This is right at the Easter break. Looking back, thirty uh, days. Easter Easter. Well, yeah, that, that's, that's the yeah. announcement that came out. Yep, yeah, that's yeah. right when that announcement came up and interest rates went up and so. But the these. These numbers, I mean, I've been tracking for a long time. These numbers pretty much hold, you know, all the time. Inventory going up, we'll watch that. I mean, that's something that, you know, in, in Texas, like near Dallas and in like the northern parts of Florida, um, they're having inventory up like 50%, and they're seeing a lot of price cuts right now. You know, we're not seeing that. But like I said, it's tail two markets. I mean, some of my listings, you know, we talk about the market updates. Some of my listings, you know, we are – slashing price and you know they're still struggling other ones are still bidding wars and selling way over what the market says are worth so right. it's it's a weird market yeah, i guess uh, the question selling. being jamie are you going to buy or hold be honest my better half wears the pants in this relationship so it's really up to her <laughs> should have had her on the video <laughs> that is the real yeah, you should have been calling her right yeah i was gonna say ryan you ryan, ain't buddy real ryan you made the <laughs> Right, you made the say. worst mistake in sales. You didn't ask yep. me. Am I talking to all the decision makers? Yeah. Yep. Dang it. Yep. Out the door that goes. Yeah. Hey, thanks for explaining everything to me. I appreciate I'll it. I'll be sure to give her a call right now. Yeah. Good information. All right, Jay Marinsky, take us on home. Well, I hope you all garnered a little knowledge a little gold nugget from this video um if you guys have any questions looking to buy and sell here at columbus reach out to any one of us uh numbers should be on the screen happy to help save you money when you're selling and help you get from point a to point b when you're buying thanks ryan thanks guys